Hey guys, Max Eberle here and welcome back to another video brought to you by ProPoolAcademy.com Master the Game, the place for champions. And today I have a video for you. It's an exercise that's very near and dear to my heart because I invented it when I was 16 years old and I finally had talked my parents into buying a pool table for me at our house in Arlington to go into the basement. Although we didn't have room for a nine foot table, we did have room for a seven foot table. And I had played mostly on nine foot tables because my grandpa had a nine foot table. So let me explain the drill or the exercise. So it's similar to straight pool because you can shoot any ball into any pocket. However, as you can see, all the balls are spread open. Not too many balls near the rail, maybe a couple balls near the rail. You could change it up by putting more near the rail, might make it more difficult. Uh, but usually I don't put too many near the rail. And basically you run the whole rack, all 15 balls, and then you spread the balls evenly again. And you do it again and again and again and see how many times you can run all 15 balls. So the idea is there's a few things that you're working on. Uh, trying to keep it as simple as possible. So in the beginning, you get ball in hand. And what I do is I look for a good opening pattern that has kind of like stop shot, stop shot, stop shot into a little bit of a, a two inch roll that pull the ball three inches and then stop shot, stop shot, small roll. Basically, try to do this drill with as little cue ball movement as possible. And it's not quite a beginner drill because when you're a beginner, you're working on these skills like stop, draw, and follow. And this, this is actually a great drill for a beginner who's been playing a little while just to gauge your progress. So if, you, if you're a beginner, say in your first year of playing or even just your first month or two really, um, there's a good chance that you can't do this quite yet, but it's a good thing to try because you'll gauge your progress as a player based on if you can do this or not. And as you progress based on how many racks you run, it's a good <clears throat> like litmus test, excuse me, for how well you're playing. Um, my thought though, I was 16, I hadn't run 100 balls yet in my career and I wanted to. I mean, it wasn't really a career, but I was already playing that year when I was 16 was my first year in the junior nationals and I had already decided I wanted to be a professional player one day. Uh, when I was 12, that's when I knew I wanted to become a professional player. So I hadn't run 100 balls yet. And I figured that if I'm going to run 100 balls, then I should at least be able to clear the table when they're all just spread open real nice. Like this. At the very least, I should be able to do that. Plus, it will give me a chance to work on my, uh, you know, my shots, my, my patterns. And that's one thing this is really good for, is for you to see how the balls connect how the shots connect but that's what I'm looking for a good beginning pattern so let's see what I'm doing here okay so the eight leaves me right on the one that's gonna leave me a shot on the five I could stop or roll from there or I'm gonna go ahead and get this ten I'll probably just yeah I can hold it there it looks like because I'm hitting it low Surprised I didn't end up with a little bit more angle. So let's see what I do here. Okay, so I had to hit it a little bit harder than I wanted to. Had I had a little more angle, I could have just rolled it up there. So that's one thing this drill is great for. You start to see the importance of a centimeter or an inch or even just a few degrees of angle. The difference that, that can make for you in how easy it is or not to get to the next shot. And it's a great drill for 
developing your straight pool game, but also it's great drill for eight ball because a lot of times with a wide open table playing eight ball, your runoff pattern is going to look something like this, even though you'll be shooting just the stripes or just the solids and having to work around the other group of balls. You start to see how seven, six, five, four, three, two balls connect to one each other into one another and how to play smart position. If you're moving the cue ball all over the place, that's not necessarily the smartest way to play position if you're always doing that because it introduced more, more distance into the shot. Although you might be playing good lines like that last one, I played two rails. It was, looks like I was playing for a position for the one in the side, but I saw that I was straight in on the six. So I took the opportunity to go ahead and shoot it at that time. And that's something that comes up in straight pool. You might accidentally land on a on a ball dead straight in all the way up the table, but because it's straight in, you go ahead, you elect to shoot that now and just do a little stop shot and get rid of it. And for the most part, I'm planning just three or four shots in advance here. And that's one great thing for this drill. You're gonna start to to plan Okay, obviously the shot you're shooting now and the next shot, but the shot after that is the third the third ball, the third shot. So that's three balls, and then four balls would be one more beyond that, or three object balls beyond the one that you're on now. Now you could take the time to map out the entire table before you even shoot the first ball, and that's what I like to do playing eight ball. Uh, have a good idea on pattern that I'm going to be playing uh, for the whole rack and then I try to execute that okay so I'll just stop and I'll cut these little spaces in between setting up the ball you know what I'll just keep it out there for now so you can see see how I throw the balls up there sometimes I'll move a ball just trying to spread them in a pretty easy pattern but again if you think this is easy then I want you to go out there and try this drill or you might not think it's easy. So it's a kind of an indication of where you're at, just your initial thought on whether or not this is easy. Uh, but if you do think it's easy and you've never tried it, go ahead and do it and see how efficiently you can run the balls. Not just run them off the table, sloppy and lazy, but get down, execute your stance and your stroke as if you're playing in a major tournament. You know, this, this isn't a, uh, a lazy man's drill. This is a drill for you to use to improve your game. So take it seriously and see how little cue ball movement you can do in between, you know, just for every shot. So one player might, might run a table, but they have two or three or four times the amount of cue ball movement when they're playing position versus another player who hardly moves the cue ball at all. And that's what I want you to try and attempt to do. Now, obviously, sometimes you're not going to land where you had hoped and you're going to have to move the cue ball further than you had intended. And also, you're going to have to change your plan. If you, if you don't get the position you desired, then look around for other options and see if you can come up with another plan especially another three ball run to help you continue the run in an efficient manner. So you don't get it attached to the exact sequence you had if you don't land where you, where you thought. So that's another thing this drill helps you with. Teaches you with being flexible. Although don't focus on being flexible, focus on actually trying to execute your little three ball run outs. Uh, now that one looked like like I was playing for that 12 ball in the corner, but it looks like I kind of got straight in on it. So let's see what I do here. Looks like I'm going to go forward two rails and looks like I might have been trying for that 13 in the side. Now these type, these uh, side pockets are tight and the side pockets here are messed up with the replacement uh, pockets. So you'll see me adjust them from time to time. Any shot in the side is going into a very small pocket on these tables and the corners are pretty small.
you know, I'm straight in on the two, just about all the way up table. So instead of shooting the four or the five, five, I'll just go ahead and take that two now. And I can shoot five or the four here. And try to stay away from the rail unless you actually have to be on the rail or you decided to be on the rail so you could have a little angle. Maybe there was a ball that was a couple inches from the rail and you decided that if you were on the rail, that would give you an angle on that shot. Uh, but you don't want to be shooting off the rail, uh, you know, coming off the rail where it's going to make the shot more difficult. So again, how well you run these, you're, you're not going to have the cue ball on the rail at all or very seldom out of a 100 ball run, maybe just once or twice or not at all is what you're going for. So keep the cue ball off the rail. Try to keep simple patterns. And try to get the cue ball exactly where you want or at least have an exact target for the cue ball. And you'll start to see the difference when you play exact fit position versus slightly sloppier position. All right, so it looks like I traveled just a few inches too far on that one. I remember the shot and I hit that one with extreme right. So that's another thing to think about. It, it's not a drill. If you're doing this drill properly, you're very rarely going to use extreme spin off the vertical axis. So you're not going to be using two or three tips of right or left very often at all. Okay, so I could make the nine float up for the 15, or I could just draw back for that two, or I could get the 15, and then the two, and then the 13. 11, that's how you could, in your mind, call off these patterns. You could be like, okay, 6, 3, 11, 7, 1, 14, 8. Or if you're just doing three balls at a time, you could be like 6, 3, 11. And then once you shoot the 6, you go 3, 11, 2. Um, if that's going to be your pattern. Now I see doing this in post-production, the commentary, you don't really know what is going through my mind. So I think it would be valuable if I do another video where I'm actually calling out my three or four ball pattern that I plan on doing in live and ahead of time. So you see what I'm thinking. So if that sounds good to you, put that in the comments. Uh, but I would like you to do that. When you're doing this, call it out to yourself or call it out to uh, your mom, your sister, your girlfriend, whoever is there watching you, your dad, your grandpa. Call your next three shots, every shot. And uh, put a little pressure on yourself to, to execute and see if you can get through an entire rack where you successfully executed a three ball pattern of your choosing every single time. And if not, how many times were you successful at that? So I did this when I was 16 on a seven foot table. And my high run was around 350 balls. And it was later that year that I broke 100 for the first time playing actual straight pool with a break shot where you play position on, you leave the very last ball. That's why it's called 14-1 because you run 14 and see where the seven ball is down there, that brown seven. That's, it. that's like a perfect position for a break ball. And where the cue ball is right there or a little bit closer to the side pocket. And then you rack up the 14 balls down there 
you make that one open shot and the cue ball goes into the rack and breaks them open and, and that's called straight pool. That's what the main tournament game was back in the 50s and 60s and 40s and what made Moscone famous was his ability to run 100 balls all the time and his world record of 526 balls. So it was later that year that that I ran 100 balls. My grandpa was a 100 ball runner. He run he ran 100 balls so many times he didn't remember. So I was lucky to have a great pool player as a grandpa who could teach me and inspire me along the way. My dad was also an awesome player. He wanted to be a professional. He never quite got there. But he did run 75 balls in straight pool and five racks of nine ball. My dad, Rob. Um, so, yeah, I think my high run or my the first time I broke 100 balls, I think it was 112. Maybe it was 108. I can't remember exactly. But this drill right here helped give me the confidence to be able to run 100 balls. And it helped me develop the skills, my stop shots and moving the cue ball in just the right amounts in order to have good angles on my next shot. So this drill is actually good for nine ball, 10 ball, 15 ball also, just because this is basic pool right here. And it's not just a drill, so it's it's kind of, it's relaxing and hypnotizing to just, to do this rack after rack after rack. Yeah, and you're keeping score, you can mark like with a penny under the rail Start at the uh, middle of the end rail and, and put a coin under each diamond to signify each rack that you complete. So since you're trying to set a high run, it shouldn't get boring because your run is getting higher and higher and higher and higher. And it's going to put a little pressure on you to, to keep executing, even though it's easy. So there's, if you think it's boring, then I want to see you run. Don't tell me that until you can run. 5,000 balls and then then we'll see how boring it is right but get get to, to where you can do at least 100 balls like this um, I think if you do that you're gonna find that it takes a lot more than you thought and it's really gonna improve your game and it's gonna help you with your, your the consistency of your stance with your concentration focus your cue ball skill, your pocketing skill as well, because even though you're always shooting what looks like relatively easy shots, or at least it will be once once you have good cue ball control, you will find that it's easy to mess up your concentration and miss a ball. It also depends on the size of the pockets. This table is going to be tougher than most because it's pretty tight pockets. Um, but even on bucket pocket tables where, where it has big pockets, you'll find that it will require your concentration to do a good job at this. So I have the 11 ball near the rail, the 12 ball, the 13 down there is maybe two balls off the rail. The 15 ball on the bottom right here is a ball and a half off the rail. And then the rest of the balls are out there. Nothing's really close to another ball. And this is what I call the basic version for doing this drill. You could do another version where there's like six or seven balls or eight balls kind of close to the rail and then the remaining balls are scattered out evenly. Not exactly the same every rack, but pretty, pretty evenly in the middle of the table. And you could start to make a couple of those balls frozen to the rail instead of just like an inch off the rail or two inches off the rail. So thanks again to the sponsor of this video, ProPoolAcademy.com. This is my membership website where for one time investment, you get lifetime access to the website with 15 modules, 33 hours of lessons and bonuses, eBooks. I have drills, fundamentals, pre-shot routine, game strategies. I've got the Zen Pool audio book, Zen Pool book, and when you join, at least at the filming of this video, I will send you for free a Powerful Pool DVD set and my book Zen Pool. I'll send it to your house 
anywhere in the world for free. So that's a great deal I got going on right now. Okay, so you see how I didn't want to just roll over to the rail. I wanted a little bit of angle on this 11 ball so that I can bring the cue ball off the rail. And now I have a straight in shot on the five. If that seven passes the 15, then I could just do a stop shot. Uh, but I think I don't want to risk it here. And I'll wait to shoot that seven and clear out the 15 first, which in straight pull we call that open the, opening the pockets. When there's a ball within a diamond or less of the pockets, a lot of times that ball is going to be blocking one or two or three object balls from going into that pocket. So when you clear out those balls, you're opening up the pocket for the other balls. And looks like, I remember this one, it's a good shot, and but the side pockets are really funny on this table, so that's why I didn't shoot, shoot the seven in the side right there. I remember this shot, this is the one time where I decided to come across, I was playing position with a seven in the corner, the lower left corner, but I knew that if I didn't land there, I'd have a shot on the 15. So the seven, the 15 was like my insurance ball. I don't do that too often um, with this drill, although sometimes you'll find that some other balls are better options than the one you ball, than the ball that you uh, landed on. And I didn't feel like using the rack, so I figure if I just make this kind of a difficult cut shot, then I'll have a uh, guaranteed nice, even a little bit longer shot on this 15 ball. All right, so there we go. And then you just do it again. It's kind of nice when you have drop pockets, that way you can just keep walking around the table spread the balls out like this. My grandpa had an old Brunswick commander table that my, my father had convinced the YMCA to sell him for a hundred dollars with all the cues and the balls and everything. He told the YMCA that the pool table was bringing the wrong element into the YMCA and they should get rid of it. And of course he would buy it and they fell for it. And my grandpa paid them a hundred bucks, took out the dividing wall in the basement and put up an I-beam because he, he built houses actually. And that table was in our family for decades. And that's the table I learned how to play on. And this, will, this drill will put you in stroke with your stance and your basic stroke and your confidence the better you get at the drill, especially. Uh, it might be frustrating at first when you do this and even the simplest of shots and positions are ending your run. Use that frustration to fuel your improving at this drill. And if you need to, go ahead and set up a shot over and over. I was playing shape on that six ball, but see, I'm not attached to it. I wasn't gonna take a, a funny cut because I'm not attached to that. I'm more more wanting to make it make the run make sense instead of being attached to uh, one shot that I tried to play position on. I can always come back and get that and end up straighter in on that three ball. And you know that's partly experience. Uh, you'll make mistakes when you do this, and you'll do, and you'll learn from them. That's the beauty of this drill is you're going to learn so much from it about how to play pool. Okay, even that one was more cue ball movement than normal. See how I came all the way across the table for that 12 when I could have stayed around there for the 7, but I didn't have that angle. So there'll be a handful of shots in in a uh, a hundred ball run where 
yeah, depending on your skill level, there'll be more or less shots where you have to move the cue ball a lot. Now, how am I going to get on this six ball? Let's see how I do this. Okay, I just held it right there. See, why play position if making the ball and stopping it already gives you position, so I can make that 15. I have a nice angle. Now, as long as I don't leave the cue ball on the rail and don't leave too much angle, then I'll have a good chance to get over for that last ball. And ended up just perfect on this ball. All right, these two will make it eight racks or 120 balls. Go out and try it yourself. Check out ProPoolAcademy.com. I think you'll like it a lot. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay, that's eight racks, 10.30, March 30th. Oh yeah, guys, I'm available for private lessons. You can book me, I'll fly to you, you fly to me. We'll set it all up. Details at maxeberly.com forward slash coaching. And also join my Facebook. It's a private group called Pro Pool Academy. I'll put a link in the description below. Make sure you put your email in when you're answering the questions to be accepted into the group. And remember, go to propoolacademy.com to get your free book and DVD set when you join for lifetime access. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.